Hello, so in this video we're going to do the uh, rear brake hose on a Suzuki DRZ. We're going to be changing it to a uh, steel braided line. So I've got one here. This one was made by HEL. I think they make them in Europe. They made a kit for the bike, so hopefully I can uh, fit this in here. It's, they're always stiffer than the rubber lines, but they've got some uh, special bends on the end, so I'm hoping that works out. And we're also going to hopefully replace the uh, brake switch on the bike. We're going to put in a hydraulic model. So I always put these on the front of Suzuki's. They've been using a, a micro switch style for like decades, and they're really quite terrible. This might be too long actually, but just by looking at it, hopefully we can get the thread into the bike. And it comes with a, a couple washers. These are nicer than the copper washers, which can corrode. Looking at the bike, it has copper washers. I think they might have been plated in tin initially. And then lastly, we're going to replace the um, brake pads on the bike. So getting ready to sell this bike. And uh, last time I rode it, I realized the back brakes were pretty much non-existent. So we'll go through uh, removing the uh, covers and whatnot. I'm going to use a, a vacuum pump to drain the system. And I've got a pail of water here. If we get any brake fluid on anything, we need to wash it off right away. So to do this job, I've converted the bike over to a lot of like Allen key type fasteners. So I'm not exactly sure what you're going to need, but you will need like a four millimeter, a six millimeter, an eight millimeter with the bike the way it sits today. So you might need different things. Actually, for this, this is eight millimeter. And what I found out is that there is two seals on this shaft. And my bike has been off road quite a bit. And the uh, linkage sticks. So when you're riding, you have to lift it up. So I'm gonna take this off and clean it and grease it and put it back together so that uh, the bike can pay, pass the safety. Otherwise, the uh, back brake light gets stuck on. And uh, well, the, bra the brake light gets stuck on because of the back brake. They're both wired in together. So uh, that's uh, one of the things we need to fix on this job. So just remove the shield here. I usually change the fasteners on Suzuki motorcycles. That's all I've ever owned. But uh, one thing I don't like about them is they have like a funny Japanese Spec Phillips fasteners that they use. And they're always a pain, so I always try to get them off as soon as I can before they get stuck on the bike and create problems. All right, so I have to figure out which uh, size that is. Put that back where it is, remember. So that's a five. I'll take a, a look at the back caliper before I take it off. I seem to remember needing to use a wrench to hold something, so uh, I'll try to come up with a solution for that before I start taking it apart. So uh, I'm going to go set up the, the vacuum pump. We'll draw the fluid down in here, and we'll start to change the hose in a minute. Okay, so I just pulled the cap off the reservoir, and you can see that uh, the brake pad is well used up. It drew the uh, diaphragm all the way down. So I'll put that aside, remembering it has brake fluid on it, so don't get it near any paint, because it'll strip the paint off. So the uh, reservoir is here. It's about half 
It's at the bottom line actually. So I've uh, got the a mighty vac set up here. It's 822707 for the canister. I'm not sure what the uh, the overall package is. There's an 8 millimeter bleeder here. So we just turn on the hook this thing on like such, put that on there. There's a little vacuum controller. You can see it coming through. The reservoir is empty now. This runs on uh, compressed air. You can hear my compressor turning on. Just try to suck out as much as we can. See that's empty there. A little bit of stuff in there off the white out. Then, if you were bleeding the brakes, you would close this before you turn off the vacuum. I just gotta turn this off and wipe off the wheel. They're painted wheels, and I don't wanna lose any paint. Alright, so I just cleaned off the wheel. I will say that I, the reason I bought that vacuum pump was to work on a couple different vehicles I had difficulty bleeding the systems on. So on the front of this bike, it has a, a very long brake hose that comes up and then goes straight back down, and I could not bleed it the conventional way. I tried to take the uh, grip off and uh, elevate the uh, master cylinder on the front of the bike and all kinds of things didn't work. Then I ended up using the uh, vacuum bleeder and in a matter of like two minutes I had the system bled. So it was very successful. So to take the hoses off of this bike we are going to use uh, a 12 millimeter. So there's going to be a bit of drippage here. I'll have to stop and deal with it. but it's so much cleaner when you do it this way compared to letting the system bleed out on its own. So I really recommend doing whatever you can to, to bleed the system before you work on it, or drain the system, not bleed it. That's actually fairly tight, so uh, well, I guess you can't see it. But anyway, when I've taken off the uh, master the bolt was quite tight you have to kind of support it with your hand otherwise you could break the master off of the bike yes so you can see that these are uh, tin plated washers which are kind of hard to find but I would really recommend if you're doing brake work on anything always try to find tin plated washers or perhaps your aluminum I'd have to take a file you can cut them in into them to see exactly what they are so that's uh, the route I would recommend going with that so you can see that's uh, the original hose and the way it bends around. So let's put that down as a sample here. I'm just going to wipe my hands off. Some water. We'll start to try to figure out how this new hose is going to fit into the system. So I'm going to install this, whether I use it or not, from an electrical perspective. I want that in the system. Now what's not identified is uh, which end is which.
That seems kind of natural there. So when you're putting this in, you want to make sure that the uh, brake line is not wound up in the shock. This seems like it's clocked at 90 degrees incorrectly. Try to figure it out. Certainly challenging to figure it out. I feel we get some torque on it using this. Do we like that? Yeah, I think that's the way it works. So the one with the heavier bend on the end goes up on the master cylinder. I'm carefully going to use a, uh, a wrench to start this. I bought this uh, sensor many years ago, so I can't tell you what the part number is. I would like to. Be very careful not to cross thread this when you're starting it. Pretty limited working space here. So when you buy uh, replacement brake hoses or brake lines, whatever you want to call them. Always make sure that the uh, fittings are clocked the correct way. If you have to get them made, that's a bit challenging because then you need to describe to the people how you want them clocked. I bought this particular brand because I like the, the appearance, which is one thing that can be important to people. But more importantly, that they were made out of like DOT certified components. So if you take a peek in here, hopefully I can show it to you. Well, the line is sitting on the uh, swing arm. It's in the two uh, guides. I feel that I've got the uh, banjo fitting fairly tight. And I'm gonna have to reuse uh, the rear washers. I would normally I'd recommend replacing them. I don't have a, a good replacement to do that with. Just gonna get a pick. There's a bit of dirt in the way here. Perhaps I shouldn't have tightened the uh, front fitting right away because it's going to be a little more challenging to get the rear one on. It's the first one tight.
there. So it's 12 millimeter for the original fastener. So now I'm not quite happy with uh, where the uh, front hose ended up. It's sort of stuck between the frame and the swing arm, so I'm going to end up having to loosen it off a little bit and reposition it. That did that nicely. So I'm going to have to stick a finger in behind here to hold it in place so that when I'm tightening it, it doesn't walk in the way. See, always a bit of trial and error when you're doing brake lines. You always want to make sure they don't rub on anything that's moving. Yeah, and another reason I picked these was uh, because the um, it's got like a swaged ends on it. So that's good. I've had different styles, ones that are like kind of made in the shop. They're meant for like racing bikes. They shouldn't be on the road. I have tried using another brand where you bought all of the ends separately from the hoses and they were a real hassle because you didn't know exactly what you wanted to get and you kind of had to make the kit on your own. And those ones rusted very quickly. I was in a place uh, with a lot of like uh, chemical fallout I suppose and you come outside after, the day after installing them and all the fittings are all corroded. Whereas the uh, HEL brand here, I've had them on the front of the bike for two years now and I'm quite happy with that. So uh, I think that's uh, the way to go. Now we're going to take off the caliper. I could have taken that off before but there's sort of, we're doing a couple different jobs at the same time so uh, you can pick whatever order you want to do. So there's like a, a greased pin there. Then I guess this comes off with the uh, wrench. That's a 12, that's too big. Maybe not. Marginal, the 11 is too small. So when you're doing this, make sure you don't damage the uh, rubber pieces. Otherwise, you, you'll end up with uh, water on the pins. And being this is a, a dirt bike half of the time, the pins will get seized up on you. And that's not good for anybody. That's just a bit of out. Now to tackle this guy. Looks like it's the size of around an eight. Yep, eight millimeter. Probably should have disconnected this first. Might become a bit of a problem.
There's this pin here. I'm not sure if this is supposed to be greased or not. So you can see I'm not entirely worn out, but I found that on the back, you're kind of underwater and in the mud. They kind of wear out on a funny angle and that creates issues. So, what I'm going to do, there's a couple different layers here. There's like a fiberglass layer, stainless steel layer. So I think these are Nissan, might be the originals. I'm just going to take the EBCs out now. It could be that I over dismantled this. If someone's done this in the past, you can let me know or let everybody know for that matter. These are EBCs. So that just fits over it. Cover on the other one. So I'll have to push the piston back in, and with the system completely drained, that kind of works out fairly well. So won't be any fluid to stop it from going in. Alright, so I got the uh, parts reassembled here. This one's going to go on this side. There's also a little uh, piece on the uh, caliper holder just making sure that it's not too corroded you could put some uh, various pastes on here which I don't have any at the time so I won't be doing that all right so let's try to squeeze in this piston okay, you can see it. try to get that all the way home Hopefully it doesn't uh, get stuck on the O-ring. Oh, it goes in nice and easy just by hand. You see it? It's going back in there. As usual, there'll be just enough space to get this wiggled in there. I'm just kind of debating with, with myself how I want to do this. I might put this back together and try to shove them in there. Then we'll know whether it's necessary to take it completely apart or not. It'll certainly be easier if this is started then the caliper will not fall off. Okay. 
I'm just gonna stop the video. We're at 18 minutes, and this thing stops at 20, so I just stop and start it again. All right, so I just uh, finished tightening this off up when we were off camera, and uh, see if we can wiggle these pads in here now. So put the back one in first. I should start this uh, by hand. So that's easy. This will not. Because all the layers of material is kind of tricky to slide it in there. I'm going to consider my options here before I start pounding on it. I'm going to go find something uh, like a piece of wood that I can uh, hit against here to get this in. Alright, so I started looking at this a little more carefully. And I don't recommend the EPC pads, say they're too thick. Just go ahead and get the uh, Nissen. The uh, metal on the bracket is thinner, just the amount of thinner, less material that you need to make this actually fit. So I'm going to take uh, some sandpaper out and I'm going to sand the backs of these uh, pads off to remove the paint. I'm hoping between the two sides I can get enough clearance. Because you can't just ram these things into the caliper because then your brake is going to get stuck on. So uh, that's the next step. Alright so I just used my belt sander, took the uh, paint off. I guess another option might be to leave out the original components. I'm not exactly sure there's no instructions that came with this product. So let's uh, try again. I found that it's better to put the uh, piston side in first. Reason being that uh, after you slide this in, you can push the, the piston in if it's uh, protruding at all. So just do that. A little bit of a pain. The trick is getting the stainless in to the caliper. Fall out. Yeah, we're pretty close. Figure out where I put the other pin. Wheel still moves.
this in. So the wheel still moves, so that's good. So the last step is going to be to bleed the system. So this will be complete. We'll put some uh, fluid in. Let's see if I can zoom this out enough. Cap recommends dot four fluid. They started labeling it by vehicle brand now. So this is going to be a GM. So one of the challenging parts of bleeding with this system is that you can't really tell when you're done. So after I'm done vacuum bleeding it, I'm going to come back and uh, bleed it with this uh, regular clear tube. Turn on the vacuum first, then crack the line. Reservoir is going down now. So before you empty the reservoir, you stop and you top it up. It's a tiny reservoir, so it's going to take a couple iterations. I think I'm close. I'm gonna take this off and we'll do the final bleeding with uh, just a conventional method. All right, so we're just about there. One thing you want to do is uh, when you pump the pedal, you'll get some air that comes out of the master. So just keep doing this until the air comes out. It's not really part of the bleeding process completely, but it will uh, use up the uh, fluid. The reservoir. So, like, I got a very hard pedal, which is another reason you use steel braided brake lines. So things are going good, so we'll just finish up this bleeding here in a second. All right, so we're gonna do the last little bit of bleeding. So, what we're gonna do here is put pressure on this pedal, open the bleeder, and watch for bubbles. You close the bleeder before you bring the pedal back up. You're going to draw a bit of fluid back in from the reservoir. So you keep an eye on the reservoir, push the pedal back down. And there is no air in the system anywhere. So now I'm just going to do this one more time to get the level correct in the reservoir. It's a little bit high. So I'm just trying to get rid of some fluid at this point.
So that's perfect. So the reservoir is good. I gotta clean the cap on it before I put it back on. So now we're just gonna take a quick look at this uh, pivot point. It appears to have a cotter pin on the back. So actually, we'll wrap up this before I take that apart so I don't spill any fluid. So we'll be back here in a minute. All right, dealt with the uh, brake fluid on the system. I'm still gonna wash this off with like a uh, garden hose. And when you see white foam, that means you still have uh, brake fluid kicking around. So like I said, I got the uh, cotter pin off. So let's see how far into this we have to go to fix it up. I tell you the, the pedal feels a lot better just by fixing replacing the line and the pads. So we'll see what's going on inside of here. So I thought it was gonna be full of sand or something, but it's, it's not bad. I'm just gonna wipe this off, put a little bit of uh, multi-purpose grease on it and stick it back in. I can see a, a brass bushing inside of here. So there's really no reason that this is sticky. So, uh, I will go and get a new cotter pin. I'm not going to replace it or reuse it rather because it's on the brake system. So um, I guess this concludes the video. This is what you might want to do if you need to service of your brakes on your DRZ or really any other bike. Thank you. All right, once another, again, another video where you think you're done. You're just wrapping it up and you realize you're not. So the reason my uh, brake light is sticking on is because of the switch itself. Hopefully you can see, but there's a wire going onto the switch. So I'm going to try to figure out how to get that switch out of there. I haven't gotten on my hands and knees to look yet. I'm going to rewire it onto the new one that I installed. But there's a problem. You can't put the reservoir back in place with this thing. It's too big. It's in the way. So uh, I guess I'll figure that out. And then we will uh, wrap up the video. All right, so the uh, rear brake switch actually has a Phillips screw holding it on, and it's at like a ridiculous angle. I think you'd probably have to remove the swing arm to get to it. I can't even show it to you where it's located. So I cut the top wires off of it, pulled the wiring out forward here, then pulled it back through. Then I have to say sorry to the future owner for doing this, but I'm going to hardwire this so that switch is not going to be removable. But uh, I don't have any better connectors. It's in a really uh, exposed location on the bike. So I think it's more important for it to be waterproof than it is to be uh, serviceable. So I've got some uh, ES3 double wall heat shrink that's going to go over top of these two crimps. So I'll just put the camera onto the uh, base here and then I'll start filming again. So my hope here is that I can uh, crimp these two wires on and then uh, heat shrink this. If the heat shrink tears because of the uh, bulge of the connectors, I probably should have staggered them a little bit, but I don't have enough space. If I could have had one start here, and the next one start here, they wouldn't be side by side. And that would be kind of helpful. So I recommend a, a crimper like this make life a lot easier than trying to use the uh, really cheap style. Just gotta twist this wire. Kind of fiddly work here to watch. At least you'll know what you're getting yourself into if you try to do this. Got those on. Now to heat shrink this. Let's see if get this down lower.
going to focus on the ends more than anything. Why we don't split it open. You can see the uh, interior material expanding. I don't need to pull up on anymore. I'm going to shrink this a bit more. I'm not going to try to get it super tight because it might split open. Take your time when you're doing this, otherwise you either have to rubber tape it if it splits open or uh, start over again. So there's some uh, like rubber electrical tape that you can use. If you pull it really tight when you're wrapping it, it will eventually become one like homogeneous substance. It'll uh, fill up all the gaps. But read the instructions on that, I think it uh, can cause cancer. So like I said, just take your time with this and use some kind of a little torch. This just has a lighter inside of it. it saves you from burning your fingers. There, so when I feel that I can tell that the uh, material is wrapped around the uh, butt splices inside of there. So I guess we'll just do a with a wiring check and then or they get to see if the light works and we'll be done. All right, so let's see if the uh, brake lights work now. I just put my hand over the back so I can see. Yep, yeah, so the brake light is working. The pedal feels awesome, so it's got to tidy up the wiring, put in the collar pin, and I'm all done. So that's the end of the video for the second time. Thanks for watching.